Ah, making a video. It is off the work to go. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> it's really it's yuck weather. Um, anyway, I think I'll do some economics talk, so buzz off if I'm interested. Um, just clarify a couple of things. Uh, it's still about this QE thing and the fact that this is un unravelable. You can't, uh, this is something that just, you can't fix it. So they use this fix to get out of the 2008 crisis, as they call it. And uh, there's no fixing it now. Now it's really broken. <laughs> so uh, it was broken before. I mean, the debt has always been a problem that no one's ever said, well, how do we fix the debt in the end? In the end, you have to create inflation to destroy the value of the money to unravel all the debt. And they've never accepted that premise that federal debt, uh, personal debt that can't be paid is a problem. You know, that it actually has to be um, destroyed in some way. It has to go away. And they never come up with a mechanism to make it go away. They just keep playing it. And yeah, maybe you can do that for 70 years. But you're just setting up the circumstance where the game is going to have to be over. And everybody's going to have to go back to whatever, some zero state, uh, depression, whatever. You're going to have to destroy everything and, you know, reapportion, see who can grab up the pieces and, uh, you know, claim ownership. So you just end up doing the Soviet Union version of capitalization. You know, <laughs> give everybody a stake and then give most of the stakeholders no way to hold on to their stake and then give the whole deal to the rich again. <laughs> you know, I don't know if we'll keep doing that cycle, but I mean, I don't know how many times you have to see it happen before you say, let's not do that again. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so traditionally there was this thing called Monte or Easing and all this other bullshit. So the Fed controlled interest rates by controlling the rate that it would charge banks for transfers between banks and then banks would base their interest rates for lending based on that minimum rate they were paying each other. And that would be the bottom. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, there would be a, a necessary increase. The, it's, like, it's like the minimum wage. You increase the minimum wage, all the rest of the wages end up going up progressively um, as a rebound to that. Um, it just happens, you know, over time. They all readjust to the, the new the new cellar. So you raise the basement, the rest of the building eventually catches up. Um, and so that's all the Fed did, blah, 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 for years. And then they start doing this thing where they had this control over the currency. And so they also had another tool where every now and then they could, you know, put money in the reserve accounts, have purchased stuff on, off the market. And if they never sold the stuff they purchased, that it would be essentially currency thrown into the market. So the Fed would buy bonds, its own bonds, and basically burn them and just say, I did, yeah, we're done with this bond. We're not, we're not going to have to play with it anymore. It's, a, it's unissued debt. And instead of debt, we've converted the borrowed money into essentially printed money because they could afford to. Uh, the economy was hot enough that they could afford to print some money and spend it without having any threat of inflation because the economy was in a condition that would allow for an expansion of the money supply. And so over the years, they've done that uh, to some 500% increase in the currency. So, um, you know, five, a double, a, a multiplying by five of the amount of currency in circulation. And in the same period of time, from like 1980 to now, there's been about uh, a 500% inflation. Prices have, most prices are five, four or five times more, things are more expensive than they were in 1980. So you can see there's a solid relationship between that currency number, how much currency is in circulation, and real inflation over time. So all these dodges that inflation is caused by this or caused by that, I think are just that. They're dodges. The real cause of inflation was printing cash. 
and uh, if we had 300 billion dollars instead of 1.2 trillion dollars in circulation now I would argue that we'd be paying 1980 prices for things because everything was always going to adjust to that currency number so um, so it's always sort of a lie that there was any other game in town that it's the actual printed cash, not the reserve accounts, not this, not that, not any fake, even borrowed money, you know, the bonds. Those things don't cause inflation. What causes inflation is the actual printing of cash and spending it. So when the government does that, when they put more dollar bills in circulation, your dollar bills get less valuable. It's just logical. So anyway, so in the crisis of 2008, they came up with all this jive to stimulate, you know, to, to make people think they're rich again. And uh, so to make them think they're rich, they made them rich, pretty much. And the idea was, you just buy a bunch of stuff off the market, and uh, off the stock market, essentially, off the rich man to buy list, and then all the paintings available, all the stuff for rich people to buy, would go up in price. And that's how you get rid of this huge financial shock, uh, is by reevaluating all this stuff that went down in value, like the real estate. So all that stuff goes back up in value when you buy a bunch of it off the market. So if you buy the bad debt of the consumers, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and, uh, you know, resell that uh, you know, as a guaranteed piece of junk. Um, yeah, you can give people back the illusion that they have money to lend. And <laughs> you can give people back the illusion uh, that it's worth purchasing because there's buying power out there to keep prices high. So people will pay a higher price for things because they think there's pressure driving the prices up. And it's all fake pressure, though, because it's not real pressure buying. It's debt buying. Completely debt buying. Uh, so it's not any real energy. It's just energy made out of signed pieces of note paper saying somewhere, somehow, uh, the future will produce five trillion dollars to give you back this money. And it won't. So that's the catch with the QE they have now. So they have, they have bought and in the past, they would buy stuff and keep it, you know, and, and just destroy it, um, and put cash into circulation. This time, they didn't actually put the cash into circulation. They just told the banks to buy the stuff with bank digits, to write a check, to have the banks write the check, and we'll guarantee the check. But that's it. There's no, it's not a real, no real money gets circulated. Uh, no real money gets respent by the bank. The bank can't uh, it can't resell the asset, so to speak, and uh, respend the money. So there's no percolating of the cash through the economy. It just goes into one instrument, buys it off the market to create the illusion of scarcity, and that's it. So now we're we've bought through the banks assets that still have value but not much but they do have value <laughs> there are bonds you can't resell them but you can't sell them at, for anything but a loss so if we resold a, that five trillion worth we might only get four trillion back uh, and we have lost a trillion on the deal and as time passes that deal will get worse and worse um, but um, the real point is is that it's created a, a, a bubble in the stock market so the point would be is not so much that we could sell it because the only, the only way you can sell it put this extra stuff on the market is in some time when the market is flush you know when it's up and that's the irony the time to sell it was when you were buying it <laughs> the market was has gone up huge and it's, and when it, while it was going up they kept buying and they should have just stopped as soon as the market went up but they just kept buying and kept buying and it was the very market that needed some cold water dumped on it. So it was the very market they should have been selling into. And uh, 
So now they're stuck with these five trillion dollars and it's a market that has to be stagnant. Now, because there's no, you know, all the fake money is stopping, all this fake spending, and so you're stuck with a market that has nowhere to go. So now you really can't sell the stuff because now, as soon as you start selling, putting more stuff on the market, the market will go down. So in a way, you can just look at this as it's two currencies. There's the, the debt currency that is represented by the stock market, and then there's the money currency, uh, the, you know, the dollar currency that we all use. Uh, you know, this other one's only used by the mega rich, and this one's used by everybody else. And these two currencies, you know, have been manipulated uh, and are manipulated by how much of it you make, um, how many assets there are to buy. Uh, so yeah, so the, the problem is, is now they're stuck in the sense that they can't just hold this stuff forever. That's not going to work. They are paying some interest on it, but um, you know it's it's a it's a real debt, and if interest rates ever go up, it's a real obligation to finance because the banks have real liability on their balance sheets. They spent five trillion dollars of their money, and um, you know all they have to show for it is this collateral of the reserve money. Now the reserve money, people keep talking like the banks can take that anytime they want. I think that's just a fact that they can't. That part of the agreement to get paid their interest is that they can't take the money. Uh, that's why they're getting paid interest, it's because they can't take the money. Uh, so it's part of the deal. But as soon as they take the money, that essentially means the money got printed, now there's more money in circulation, and that means inflation will begin. Uh, and that's just the truth. Now, a little bit of inflation now probably wouldn't be a bad thing, so, uh, you know, it might be worth doing if, uh, you know, there was some way you could control that its effect on the markets, which you can't. So again, they're still stuck with the idea that the market, the stock market, it's the only thing creating this illusion of anything called wealth. There's just desperate poverty. There isn't any real wealth. Because all these debt notes are unpayable. The federal debt is unpayable. Uh, people would have to work 20 years for free to pay their portion of the national debt, the average worker. Uh, it's just an unsustainable, uh, unfixable, unresolvable debt. And much of personal debt is likewise null and void, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, student loans, all that stuff, just can't be paid back realistically, won't be paid back realistically. Uh, and then you have the piles and piles of junk that the federal government has FDIC insured, which is absolute junk. So they're, you know, market stocks and bonds that have no real value, no hope of the country paying it back, or the, um, the, the mortgage security ever returning any value. And uh, the government's FDIC insured it, so when it finally is acknowledged that the piece of paper is worthless, uh, you know, there's, 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 it's, it's insured a piece of worthless paper. It's going to have to keep buying it from people as if it's real value. And so it's just really a debt note uh, that we're paying interest on in the end. It's just another piece of borrowed money that has nothing, no real collateral. So it's effectively the same thing. You know, not having a worker willing to work to pay back a debt is about the same thing as having a piece of paper that entitles you to a property that doesn't exist. So, uh, yeah, there's no, you know, there's no, um, it's no different than just pure debt, uh, unsustained, uh, unpayable debt. So that's the, the real circumstance of the economy is that it's been rebubbled in a, in a pure bubble sense. I mean, the first bubble was, you could at least say, was somehow legitimately created 
you know, through the process of people feeling okay about taking on some extra debt, buying a house, being invested in their future, so there was some reasonableness to that debt. This debt, this, this bubbling of the economy, was just an overt blow hot air into it. QE is just hot air. It's just a gimmick. And again, the argument I'll make is there's no way to unravel the gimmick. There's not going to be any good time to drive the stock market down. They're never going to say, oh, things are just great. We can handle a 20% drop in the stock market. They're never going to be in a position to say that because they know when the stock market goes down, revenues go down, uh, financial debt for the government goes up. So they know markets going down uh, means debt goes up for the federal government. More debt is acquired. So uh, they're never going to have a time where they can resell these assets that money has been borrowed to buy. But as soon as there's any kind of crisis, any time where the banks need the money that they should have because they bought stuff with um, a promise that they're going to be able to pay it back because uh, we gave them the money in the reserve accounts. Again, they're liable because they paid banknotes, their, their promise, they made their promise to pay somebody money for something they held. And so they're going to have to come up with a gimmick, <laughs> you know, to uh, unravel that fake purchasing. Uh, sorry. Um, you're cool, lovely, lovely, lovely. Unfortunately, the weather isn't. But, you know, take what you can get. Uh, I have to work at the other location today. Uh, anyway, um, have a longer walk. Some more time for this. Uh, but, you know, we're getting to the end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there's there's a lot of little nuance to this, and you know sometimes I use the wrong word somewhere, and so I just want to be clear about what's happened. Um, and what everybody, like I said, has even the people saying they're full of shit. That's not what happened. You know, they even they've got it wrong. <laughs> you know, in terms of describing what actually took place with quantitative easing, it was just to blow up the stock market. The only purpose was to increase, to, to make the rich rich again, so they could employ us uh, as their servants and keep the economy running. Because that's all we are. We're, we're a service economy. We're in service to people who have enough money to buy labor, laborers. And that's pretty much all there is. So if the rich go poor, most of us go unemployed. Uh, because we don't have, we don't do real work creating anything real. We just polish the toenails of the rich, essentially, most of us. Uh, so we can't, we don't have, we don't have a job uh, without trickle down, because we're so dependent on trickle down now. Because we don't have any real economy where we make things for each other, where we do anything for the common man. We just do things for the uncommon uh, uh, asset owners. <laughs> but the assets, again, that's the joke of it. Their money is all debt. Their money is all IOUs that can't be paid back. So they're claiming they're very rich because they have claims on our cash. Right? They have a ton of claims, trillions and trillions of dollars of claims on our cash. Uh, so they claim themselves to be rich, but all those claims are written, uh, are, are based on contracts that are unfulfillable, that can't be fulfilled. You won't, there's nobody to pay the federal debt, <laughs> so it's not going to get paid. Uh, there's nobody, like I said, the most of the private debt, 
is dead. It's it's mortgages people can never pay off. It's it's dead money. Uh, and so the, the, this game has nowhere to go. Huh, I still have tape up over here. It must be about the. I guess they're protecting the grass. What the hell is this about? Let's see. Caution bees. Oh, the dirt bees. <laughs> yeah. Dirt hornets now. There's two kinds of, there's more than one, one kind of dirt bee, of course. And there's this new horny bee kind. They're just fucking insane. They will kill you. <sighs> so, uh, let's see, what was it? Yeah, so it can't be. There's no, there's no road out. Uh, they've, uh, you know, just load the boat with gold. And, uh, it's going to sink the boat. So, there's no, there's no getting out of it. It's nice, they got a couple of swans again. They were here last time I was here, so I was thinking that maybe they still hadn't clipped their wings or something, or... Maybe they won't stay, but I'm not sure. Guess I'll have to find out from the town whether these are uh, forever swans or just for the weekend swans. But it really does uh, class up the joint. <laughs> you know, when you have a pair of swans, it really, uh, you know, they really add to the uh, scenic beauty of the skanky little pond. <laughs> yeah, it really does help. Uh, yeah, especially like sunset and the swans are swimming. It's just, yeah, very nice. Anyway. Um, yeah, crappy day. <sighs> crappy day. Anyway. Uh, anything else to say? So anyway, so yeah, this was the, the five trillion in reserves can't be pulled out by the banks because it's printed cash if they spend it. So they can't spend it. The only way to get the money out of the reserve accounts is for us to sell the assets we bought. If we sell the assets, that drives the stock market down. So that ain't going to happen. So you're just stuck with an extra five trillion in effective debt. Uh, it's just going to sit there, in a sense. I mean, it's, it's not new debt in the sense, like I said, the assets do have value. So we have effectively taking old debt off the market in a sense off the liability sheet but it's still a liability but the real point is is that it took them off their normal market it's just hiding <laughs> it's just hiding a debt and hiding a debt is not resolving a debt and and when you do it for the purpose of driving up a fake sense of wealth uh, by pretending there's less debt you know what I mean? It's like cheating on your credit rating. It's like hiding the fact that you have a huge, you know, one of your credit card bills or something. It's just hiding it. It's not fixing it. And so then when people pretend like they have a wealth that doesn't really exist because it's based on the fact that you cheated. You, you're hiding, you know, the assets that would uh, devalue the other assets. Um, so it's just a cheat, and if you cheat up, uh, it's not a real up, and it will come down if, when any kind of push crisis happens. So as soon as the as soon as the game is pushed at all hard, so poked at all, as soon as the banks get poked, they're going to want their money. So those assets will have to be sold, or the money will have to be released as printed cash. And so you can imagine that in a, in a place where the banks are in crisis, you're talking about a time when the markets are going down. And then, so in a time when markets are going down, we're going to be stuck with a choice of increasing cash, which is totally inflationary, or um, selling assets on the downing market putting more assets on the down market. So we're either going to drive the market down harder through selling bad assets on the market or we're going to inflate 
uh, we're going to inflation inflation will destroy the value of cash which is essentially the same thing as driving the market down and it hurts everybody else into included so the difference is, is if you kill the cash you don't go hurt the rich you hurt the poor yeah. well, anyway so enough till next time and such yeah.